Um, I want to, I just have a couple more questions and then I want to get into, um, uh, you know, religion and mental health and things like that to kind of close this thing out. But before we do that, I want to talk about the fall of Afghanistan and you obviously spent a lot of time in Afghanistan. I believe we're coming up on three years now since, uh, the end of this month, I believe it will be three years since the horrible pullout and everything that happened as an Afghan veteran who not just went to Afghanistan, but killed a lot of people and served in a tip of the spear role. What were your thoughts watching the country collapse in the way it did? Well, honestly, at first, when it first happened, I was too busy with work and really wasn't paying attention to it a whole lot. But I had a guy that had seen me on the first Team House podcast that I did. Um, and he actually reached out to me. He said he was a contractor and she's working with these guys. And he was like, hey, I'm trying to help some of your Afghan boys out to get out of there and I can't figure out what to do. Like, he's like, I'm running at dead ends. Can you help? And so he kind of pulled me into that. And then I ended up working, trying to help some of my Afghan ARU guys get out. Um, a couple of them got out with the initial push, the guys that came out uh, with the government, but for the most part, they were left stranded there. Um, you know, our government literally handed over proof that these guys worked for them and just so that they could be killed. Um, they, that our government blocked every opportunity that we could to get them out, like every legal pathway, they just shut it down. Like they even talked to countries, like we were talking to third party countries to accept these guys just to get them out of Afghanistan. And our country, the United States would go behind our backs with, you know, Blinken and whoever and tell them not to, not to allow any of these guys out. So we literally can't find countries for the most part to accept them. Um, and I created a group called Project Exodus Relief. It was just me and a bunch of my other buddies that special operations buddies, we were talking about, hey, we need to like bring this together and work together. So we brought it together, had a big Intel cell for a period of time, I think probably close to 150 people with the Intel cell that we had and all these guys working. Um, and we worked the best we could. We got a bunch of American citizens out. We've advocated for our soft partners heavily, but to no avail. I mean, literally no one cares. Um, I mean, these politicians will tell you they care, but they don't really care. I mean, if I chuck $5 million in their pocket, they'd help me out. But that's literally the only way that you can get anything done from what I found out. Yeah, and, and that's really disheartening because I agree with you that politicians in this country, uh, unless you're going to essentially, I don't bribe them or whatever, however you want to phrase it, uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're they're eager and help. Selling. Yeah, they're eager uh, in helping themselves and not not too many other people along the way. Here's another question I want to I want to touch on Afghanistan because it became a big thing of like all these people who went over there and made themselves out to be heroes and books oh, yeah. and documentaries and all this shit. And then you hear from other people who were there on the ground and they're like, well, actually, uh, they didn't do anything. They actually caused problems. And we don't need to mention names. There's many such cases. Yeah. When you see something like that, what do you think about people who are essentially going just so they can post on Instagram? Well, it really pisses me off because the biggest thing, like when we had Project Exodus at its pinnacle, we had the capability to get these guys out on our own. Like I had airlift assets. I had rotary wing. I had dudes surveying drop zones and LZs. We had fixed wing assets. We just didn't have the funds. But then you have certain people like we've talked about that were going over there doing selfies of themselves in a plane, probably here in the United States in cases. I know certain cases it wasn't in Afghanistan for sure. Dudes taking pictures of themselves like, hey, look at me in Kabul. Meanwhile, they're two countries over um, saying they're doing this and people are dumping money on them left and right. Um, some of these organizations that collected the most funding didn't spend any of it in Afghanistan. They left the country with it in pocket. And then the groups like mine and a lot of these others that we ended up forming up this thing called the Moral Compass Federation, we're struggling. Like we have the capabilities to move people. We just didn't have the funds and couldn't touch funds with a 10 foot pole. It seems like, whereas all these other people making fake spectacles of themselves were just loading up on the money because they had all the publicity. Yeah, it's really, it's really scummy. And uh, I just don't know what would drive someone to make a, make it about them to make like an evacuation an opportunity to get famous. It just, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever, but we don't need to, we don't need to dwell on that too much. I know, I know, 